Hello and welcome to another PortraitTutorials.com tutorial. Today we're going to be doing the five elements of shading. Alright, so to start, you're going to need a kneaded eraser. Any one will do. This is the one I'll be using for the tutorial. Then you need a circular object. Anything will do. Any size will do. You also need a pencil, preferably 2B. That's the one I'm going to use for the tutorial and that will, will be what is easiest to follow along with. You're also going to need a blending uh, stump or tortolian roll. I think I said that right. Uh, this is a little big. We're going to use a smaller one. This size will do. Alright, so now let's get started. Let me just take all this stuff off my page. And we're going to start with the circular object in the center of the page. Uh, actually, you know what, let's move it to the top left corner. And start by tracing the light outline of your circular object. And once you're finished and happy with that, draw a surface for your uh, sphere to sit on. Doesn't need to be straight, doesn't need to be perfect. As you can see, I'm not using a ruler here. And now let's start with the cast shadow. It's going to be the shadow of the sphere, and it's going to be darkest directly under it. And as we pull away from the sphere, it's going to get lighter. So we're going to use less pressure as we move away from the sphere, and more as we get closer. You'll be, you can already see the different tones, and it's kind of choppy in that one area. So let's just go back here and fix that up. Yeah, that's a little better. Alright, now we'll do the bottom part of the sphere where there is no light reaching it and it's going to be really dark. Remembering to leave a small little uh, outline sort of uh, thing on the outer edge of the sphere to make it look a little more round and you'll see how this pulls together uh, later on in the video. Let's just show where the light is right here. Uh, as you can see from this curved surface, uh, this curved surface, um, the light is direct sort of in front of the sphere and above it and it's going to be hitting at the full point right about th right about here actually. Uh, let me just erase that. <coughs> okay and now we'll continue with that dark part right under the sphere. As we get closer to the top of the sphere and the side of it, uh, we're going to bring that dark part to the very edge of the sphere because that little lip uh, of light isn't there anymore. Let's just lightly sketch where the full light area is, where it's the brightest point on the sphere. Lighten it up, actually. It's a little dark. That's good. Alright, now we'll continue with this dark area right here, and we'll begin to pull away from the sphere just a little bit, uh, lightening up pressure only a little bit. Don't want to do too much yet, just yet. Continue with this until you're happy with it, lightening stuff and darkening it as you need. I'm just going to erase the outline right here so it's a little less uh, easy to see. That way it doesn't affect when you see the light there. Now we're going to start using the side of the pencil. Not too much though. Oh, oh no. I seem to have smudged it. Let's just erase that. Uh, you got to be careful for that. The lead can pick up under the pencil actually and you can spread it around like that. I forgot about that for a second there, so try not to do that. Try not to forget. I'll actually just... Let me just uh, show you what actually happened. If you look at my pencil, right... At, if you look at my pencil, uh, you can see actually the lead, the graphite kind of collecting there, and that's what spread it around. I don't want to do that. Alright, now let's continue lightening uh, our stroke till we get towards the full light area of the sphere. 
remembering to keep uh, curved strokes. Uh, that's what's going to give the sphere its rounded appearance. We can keep going on with our shading. Start with the other edge now. Now here it's going to be a little lighter because it's closer to the light. Uh, try and get around that little edge of light. The little, the one very bright spot on the sphere where there's full light. It's the brightest point. I will start outlining it. Now we'll do just under it. Sort of outline it a little bit, and we're pretty much done. Uh, all we kind of, all we really got to do now is the finishing touches and the blending with the blending stump. Let me just zoom in on this here. As you can see, it's kind of choppy, not very smooth, and that's where the blending stump comes in. You can use your finger for this as well; it also works just as good. Uh, we're going to start with the light areas first because we don't want that dark graphite getting into our very, very light areas. We want it just at the right tones in all the areas, so we're going to start with the light areas first and then work our way into the darks. So to do a circular sort of motion on the sphere. And then we keep getting darker and darker. And you can already see it kind of pulling together. You want to make sure you get that cast shadow before you go too dark on your sphere. Otherwise that dark lead will uh dark graphite will start to collect and it'll smudge it around a little too much and give you some dark areas where you don't want it. Also remember keep the curved strokes, the circular strokes that'll shape the sphere. Make it a little more realistic. And we're just about done here. Now we just gotta blend it all together so it's not too choppy and the tones aren't too separated. Almost like a block. Block of color, one after the other. And you can see now how that little uh, lip of light kind of pulls together with the rendering. You'll see a little more closer towards the end that it, it uh, starts to look really, really good. Now we gotta get the very, very edges of the sphere. 